Hello folks, my name is Wayne Martin. I'm with the University of Minnesota Extension. And we're here on the St. Paul campus of the University of Minnesota on the Student Organic Farm, where during the summertime, we raise broilers uh, as a project for the students who are interns. And also we sell, end up selling these birds to the uh, uh, campus club on campus. It's a nice restaurant. And also we sell these birds to individuals who may be interested in eating them. What I'm doing today is uh, planning to show you uh, one of our huts and how we, we came to choose this particular design. There are many different ways of, of uh, raising birds out on a field, out in a pasture setting, but I've always been concerned about issues related to predation or to stormy weather and the negative impact that can have on your uh, bird population. So we, uh, and in particular here on this campus, we have a lot of hawks, so we really have to have the birds inside. We also have coyotes and foxes right here in the metro area, something you wouldn't be uh, believe at first, but right in the middle of this, um, in between Minneapolis and St. Paul where this campus is, we have uh, coyotes on campus and foxes as well. So there are different hut designs that you can use. Uh, one of the more famous ones I think is the, uh, what's called the chicken tractor that's been developed by Joel Soliton. But that design for me is um, um, one that is too low to the ground for bird comfort for me. And um, it's also ha typically has corrugated metal uh, roof, which is hot in the summertime. And you can't see the birds. One thing I like about this particular design is it's tall enough that I can walk into it to uh, feed the birds and to give them water. It also allows me to see the birds uh, all the way to the back and get a good feel for how they're doing or to be able to spot any birds that are sick if uh, that might be the case. So it's also a design that is, um, while being really solidly built, and uh, it's endured some 70 mile an hour straight line winds without problem. Uh, it also is fairly light and easy to move with the two wheel dolly. The basic features of this design is that it is eight feet by eight feet. So we have four before by eight runners and then we cross over with two before by eight um, planks and put them on with wood screws. And then we use cattle panels that are 16 foot in diameter, or in length rather, let me put it that way. They're 16 foot in length, four feet uh, in height. So we have two cattle panels uh, right here that we arch over. They fit perfectly to give us about a six foot entryway. Everything inside the feeders and waterers are all suspended from the roof. And the cattle panels, it, while being arched and they're nailed on, they are strong enough that they can support the weight of the feeders and the waterers full of uh, water and feed. And so that helps in the process of moving the huts. We can just uh, get the two wheel dolly underneath it and move it and uh, without problem. Everything comes forward all at the same time, feed and water. And then we just simply build in a door. We use hardware cloth. In the past we've used chicken coop wire, but that's too, uh, has too big of a gap in it. It allows, you can see some chicken coop wire right here. And that allows a raccoon to get its paw through there, or it allows a hawk to get its beak through. And while they may not get a bird out, they can do significant damage with chicken coop wire. So we have switched to using hardware cloth just because uh, it's really solid material and nothing can get through it. Uh, we put hardware cloth at least up four feet along the sides. And that's true even underneath this vinyl siding which we're using. Um, then we also put uh, either hardware cloth or some other kind of um, fencing material along the bottom just to make sure that no creature will get in it. Then um, we switched, we used to use tarps. Um, nylon tarps on the outside, but the problem with tarps is that even the, the heavy duty ones wear out after a year or two uh, and they deteriorate in the sunshine. Also heavy winds can rip them apart. And so while they are cheaper, uh, it, you know, um, up front, 
they don't last, so you end up spending more money and more labor dealing with them. So what I like to do is, uh, we, well, we just gave this a try as um, we put the vinyl siding on last fall, and we're very happy with it. It's very, uh, it's kind of labor intensive to put this on. It does take some time, but well worth it. And the vinyl siding ultimately is um, not that much more expensive than a couple of tarps. So we, what we do is uh, start at the bottom and cut pieces that are uh, eight feet in length. And then these are all tied onto the cattle panel on the inside. Then um, each one of these pieces is interlocked. So they're held together. In the back, on the back side, we have half of the cattle panel. So we cut one, uh, take a 16 foot piece, cut it in half, and then that's a kind of a support for the chicken coop wire across the back. On the front, because we have the door here, we have two short runs of, uh, of hardware cloth, then the door, and up above we have chicken coop wire. So for a little over $200, you can have a, a hut that will hold 30 to 35 birds quite easily. We have six of these huts here on campus, so we're raising birds in batches of 200 birds and it works very well for us. The first hut I built was eight feet wide and 12 feet long. So we used three cattle panels for that. That is uh, a little harder to move and I'm not sure, even though it's nicer in a certain way because it holds 50 birds, I'm not sure that I would build another one that's eight by 12. The eight by eight size is a nice size to hold quite a few birds, 30 to 35, and it's one that you can move relatively easy. Even our uh, student interns are quite comfortable moving it. And that's a key feature, is to be able to move this with a two-wheel dolly with just one person. All of these huts, we never had wheels, uh, and so we were able to move them nonetheless but this year, because our clover stand was so thick and so heavy, we realized that we couldn't move them easily without putting wheels on. So, so this year we added seven inch in diameter steel wheels. The other thing too is that in the very first hut I built, I put in a, um, a little bar at the back that swings and it hits the birds as, uh, as we're pulling it forward and it kind of shoes them along. Essentially, it's a little PVC pipe that is on rope and hangs from the ceiling and then it uh, uh, just swings back and forth and it hits them as we're moving forward so it encourages them to come forward.